Now we'll be moving into the cleaning part of the data. So the last few slides have all really focused on how we get the data into R, but once we have it there, we will want to often clean it up a little bit to have a, a, a different or nicer data set to work with as we're moving through. Some of the common tasks that you might wanna do include renaming your columns. And we'll talk in particular about some cases where your column names as they're read in would be really hard to work with and you really wanna do that. You might also want to extract certain columns or certain rows. And we've looked at that a little bit already with the select function and the slice function. You can also do some other ways of picking out your rows, including doing a random sample of them with sample n. You can filter to just specific rows based on some logic. For example, if you only want rows that have a certain value in one of your fields. And you could also arrange them, like you could put them in descending order based on one of the fields. You also might want to add or change columns. So a new column might be a function of some of the previous ones that you had, or you might want to take the one that you have and clean that up a little bit or extract a specific piece out or otherwise um, um, do some kind of mutation. And so that we'll use the mutate function with. So in the next set of slides, we will be going through several of these. So this will go across several videos. In this uh, video, we'll talk a little bit about the rename function. All of these are using functions from the dplyr package. Um, and we'll also be working a little bit moving forward with one called the stringer package. And that's one that specifically helps you when you're working with character strings, with vectors in that data type. So both of these are part of the tidyverse package. So if you wanted to, you could install the tidyverse package and load that all at once. And as we move later in the class, we'll take that shortcut. But for right now, I think it's really helpful to get a feel for which functions are going in which library, which package. And so I suggest that for a little while, you still load these package by package. So we'll load the packages for dplyr and then for string r. To do that, we're gonna go into that practice r, r project that we created in a previous, uh, a previous video for this week. There are a few ways you can do that if you don't have R open already. First of all, if you just open R Studio, it will likely open with the last project that you use. So that's one way to do it. Another, you can go to your directory, and if you click on that .r proj file there, that will open up the R project in R Studio. You can check to make sure you're in the right one up here on the top right. That will say which project you're currently in. And this also gives you the chance to switch between projects or even close them. So for example, if I close this project, it will take me back to, to, um, to a regular setting where I'm not inside a specific project, just like we started out in our very first steps in R. So if you happen to get here sometime and you want to move back into that practice R project, you can go up and just select it. And then it'll move and open a new R session in that project. So we'll come over here and let's load those two uh, packages. So the first one was read R that we'll need. And then we're gonna need dplyr. And then the last one is stringer. I like to list all of the libraries at the very top of my R script because that way if I hand it off to somebody else, they can quickly see if there is a package that they need but don't have installed and install that before they start working through the code. So we can do control return to go through and load each of those and you can see down here in the console as we do that, that it is moving that down and doing it in the console. As an example, we'll be working with the daily show guest data. That's something you've been using in your in-class exercises and then you're also using it, um, we're using it some in these slides. So we'll read that in. As a reminder, we have that in a subdirectory of this project if you set yours up the same way as I did in a previous set of these slides. So we've got a subdirectory called data and then it's right in there. So we can do that, let me see, what do we name this? Daily show. We can name the object daily show. And then we can do read underscore CSE. Again, this one will only work if you've, if you've loaded the, the reader package already. And then in quotation marks, we'll put the path to that file. Again, it's gonna start with data because from our working directory, which is this R project, we need to tell it first which subdirectory to go into, and then we'll give it the file name. 
And we can use tab completion in our studio to do that and save ourselves some time. So if you do a tab, you can see it gives us the options for what we have in this directory. We'll click on that and then we'll do another tab and we can select the daily show guest. The other thing that we need to do, if you remember, and we can open this up, we've got four extra lines of information at the top of this data file before we get into the information that we want to read in as the data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to skip these first four rows and just start on the fifth row. So I'm using skip equals four here to set that up. So now we can check and make sure that looks okay and come down here in the console. It looks like it read it in fine. So this is the example data set we'll be working with through the next few sets of slides. The first thing I will often do when I read in a data set is rename the columns. Uh, that's because it can be really hard to work with columns with certain names and a lot of times the files you get in have these patterns in their name. So you can fix them very quickly and then it saves you time typing and time thinking as you work with that data. So it's often hard to work with a column name that's really long. It just takes you a long time to type it in and your script ends up being really long and it's hard to fit inside that uh, about 80 character limit that we're aiming for for a clean script. It's also tricky if it doesn't follow the rules for naming our objects. So we talked a little bit about those rules, things like it can only be numbers, uh, letters, and an underscore character, and um, that it shouldn't start with a number. Some of the rules like that, R will let you have column names that, that break those rules, but they become hard to work with, especially in tidyverse, because a lot of the tidyverse functions um, take advantage of a non-standard evaluation to let you call those column names as if they were object names. And that saves you a lot of time typing, but what happens if your column names don't follow those rules, you have to protect them with back ticks and all of your code gets really long and complex. And the last thing is, again, we can take out things that include uppercase. It'll just save us some time with the shift key and some time in remembering what case we use, because again, R is case sensitive. So we can take a look using the call names function, C-O-L-N-A-M-E-S, that will give us the column names for a data frame that we have loaded. So we can see what those are, and you can see that we're breaking a few of those rules here. We have this year that's all in uppercase, and then we have some pretty long ones as well. So we can use the rename function to change these to something that's gonna be easier to work with as we move through our script for this data set. The rename function will take your data frame, I've kind of shown a cartoon here, and all it does to it is it takes that, that column name, that topper here, and it changes that, it renames it and gives it a new name. The basic syntax for this is that you will first put in the data frame that you're working with, that's the first argument into data, into rename, and then you go through and you'll separate by commas pairs, where the right-hand side of the pair says what the old column name is, what it is right now, and the left-hand side says what you want it to be, and then you'll just put an equal sign in between. So here's an example. This is using a data frame. Let's say that we have one called HP data that's got some of that data from Harry Potter we looked at the very first week. And our first column name here is something long and ungainly. So we want to rename that from HP first to first underscore name. The way this rename function will work is we'll sp first specify that our data is the data frame name with the object name HP data, and that we want to take HP first, which is the current column name, and we want that to be changed into uh, first underscore name. I'm realizing I have an error right here. So rather than last name, that should be first name. But that's what we want for our new column name here. So we can try that with the daily show data. Let's come down here and we'll do daily show and rename. And then our first argument is the data we want to read in. So we want to read in the existing daily show data frame. Now next, we need to do those pairs of how we want to pair things up. So let's come down here. Our first one that we have is year in all caps. So let's name that in lowercase. We can use the same thing, but under uh, lower lowercase for all of it. The next one is this Google knowledge op uh, occupation. I think that that's just job, so we'll do job equals. And we could actually maybe let's save ourselves some time and copy that in. 
Uh, for the next two, we'll just do those in lowercase instead of uppercase for the first letter. And then we'll do guest for this raw guest list. I got this one in the wrong order. Let's try that again. There we go. So now we can come down and we can look at Daily Show. And you can see that it has changed those column names to these shorter ones. Now, just as a quick check, make sure you can remember what the difference would be between running this code and this code. So please pause your video for just a second and think through what the difference would be and then we'll take a look. Hopefully you've gotten a chance to try that out now and, and think about what the difference would be. So let's go in and see what would happen. So I'll redefine daily show here and let me move this up a little bit so you can see more down here. If I only ran all the stuff on the right hand side of the gets arrow, what will happen is down here in my console, it prints out exactly what I want. So it shows that those column names have changed. But then if I call that object later and print it out, they're back to what I didn't want. So what had happened here is it's running this code and it prints it out right away, but it will not overwrite that original object and replace it with the new one with the better column names unless you use the gets arrow to reassign. So we could have named something this something different, but I think in this case, we want the same thing. We just want to modify those column names. So we're overwriting our original version when we assign in this case. So if I run this one, it doesn't print out anything immediately, but now when I call that object, you can see it's got the column names that we want. 